Hello, Reason users. This is Alternating Bit, and uh, I really had trouble uh, finding a way to map units, uh, do MIDI mapping for control uh, as far as rack extensions go, because they're still relatively new, and not all third-party members are providing uh, remote maps for to be able to have surface control over. And hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so basically. You have an instrument and you know you have the uh, subtractor and so forth and when I move the sliders say on my keyboard um, they will now control you know my keyboard has is Nakai MPK 61 and it already has built-in maps because it recognized it when I went to preferences and changed the uh, control surface to the Akai 49 you know, it, it defaults to 49 I have a 61 same deal as far as the controls go well, uh, when it comes to these new uh, rack extension devices, such as the Korg Poly 6 and others, many, many others out there, um, you can obviously create your own uh, what, what they call remote override mappings. But as soon as you do that, you lose the ones that are globally set for the other keyboards. So in other words, a fader 1 uh, on my you know subtractor is actually... Uh, fader one on my keyboard suddenly it disappears if I override it to say you know to use for this frequency if I did that so and it's temporary it's only for this session I, I put another Korg in in here and boom I'm back to ground zero none of these uh, items have any control so anyway moving forward how can we get uh, mapping to work for these new rack extensions um, well basically uh, it is obviously complicated if you go to the propeller head site and you'll see you know maps versus codex explained um, I don't even remember how I got here but the link was on my one of my last videos I did I put a link on it that's how I found it again uh, talk about um, finding the right editing tools to edit your remote maps and then it shows you you know in an Excel document how it will lay everything out in row per row which is great I guess I, I had a, a very old version of Excel and I guess it wasn't uh, saving it in the proper there's always different ways of saving the file and it, it just didn't seem to work so then I tried the instructions of using notepad and yes it, it let me edit it but then it still wouldn't let me save and I was just getting so frustrated I couldn't figure out what the problem was then I saw someone else had a similar problem and what they ended up using was a different notepad type program so I'm gonna get on uh, move on and show you how to access these files. So you go into your uh, hard drive and uh, go to. I'm using Windows, obviously, so I don't know about Mac. Sorry, but um, you're gonna go to uh, instead of program files, you go to program data, and under there you find Propeller Head software, and then uh, Reason is there, and then Remote, and under Remote, there are Codex and Maps. Maps is what we're gonna be looking at, MIDI maps, and here you'll have listed. Uh, you know all the main controller companies you know M Audio and Elisa's you'll see them all here uh, I have an Akai uh, that's what I'm using and and there's your remote map files the extension is actually remote map a uh, very odd you know file it's not your common everyday file so um, I'll use the Behringer right now I'm using the BCR 2000 now one thing I also discovered in the process of editing even with this new program, I got this program called Edit Pad Light. It's a free program. Edit Pad Light. Just look it up, I guess, or I'll, I'll provide a link below uh, at the end. Uh, and so with that program, when I tried to edit it, it said, this is read-only. You cannot edit it. You know. And then there's a mode that you can switch that. I don't remember somewhere up here. Anyway, so then you make it so it's not read-only. But then even after that, when I tried to save it and overwrite the, the original file, it wouldn't let me. It had some problem. So for my way to work around this was fine. I just I took the original and put it in a I made a separate folder, original file, just to back it up to be safe, you know. And then I um duplicated it and then I edited it elsewhere out of this folder and then saved it with the same name. Deleted it out of this folder section and then just pasted it in here. Then it wasn't overwriting anything and it favored the new file. So that's how I did that. So anyway, you open up the file and you'll find in there, you know, this is again the file that came with the the, the Behringer setting for the uh, BCR 2000. 
and it will already have mappings for all the common reason devices. Here's the subtractor. Um, this is how it differentiates what, what the item is before it gets in. It has, it's called the scope. And it will have the name of the company or the, uh, yeah, and then the, the actual device and so forth. And it'll be all broken down. Now keep in mind, this edit pad does not have all the, uh, you know, grid-like spreadsheet, whatever. So if you make a change, uh, be sure that your spacing is still proper. So in other words, uh, if I were to see, if I start doing that, if I save this, there would be an error message that wouldn't work. So you do want to make sure that you can just eyeball, you can see how the other columns are uh, to tab over properly and so forth, okay? And then to add another device that doesn't exist, um, you have to find out what the name is of that device. So for rack extensions, some of these new devices, it's actually the name that is on the bar, uh, like the, the heading, uh, category, whatever. So you want it to be Korg or Rob Papin uh, when you're identifying the item. So it says scope, and then it just says Korg. And then the next tab over, this is the this is the the real tricky one. You have to have the exact name written exactly the way it is of the device here as far as how it's identified deep in the rack extensions folder. Another place you have to dig and geekify yourself to find. And that is actually located under um, you, you go to your user settings, find your app data folder, and then roaming, propeller head software, rack extensions. Then you see your list of extensions. Obviously, I don't have many. <laughs> but um, at any rate, that's where you get this exact name. It starts with like a web address, kind of backwards, com dot rob papen dot, you know, and, and that becomes the name. Uh, so that, that needs to go there. Uh, on that next line. That's how we'll find the unit. Interestingly, it doesn't use the number after it. So it'll just say poly6 and it just ends there. Whereas in here you'll see it says jp.co.org.poly6 and then there's a dot number. Don't worry about the number. I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but this is all online. I'm trying to provide as many links as possible in my description of this uh, video down below. But I just want to kind of whiz through here, you know, for the sake of the video. Uh, okay, so y you have that, the name, and then, I mean, all this stuff, all you have to do is copy and paste from the previous one. You know, you just find, okay, you know, here's uh, a surface I'm familiar with or whatever, um, a device. Here's the pulverizer. It's actually in there already, which is actually a rack extension. But anyway, um, you would just highlight the, uh, I think I lost it already. I'm scrolling too fast. Um, well, there's the echo. All you have to do is just highlight this whole section because it has those brackets. You want to make sure all the spacing's proper. Copy, you know, just copy and paste it um, down below, and you're ready to start your next rack extension unit that you want of choice that you've added that might not have uh, any mapping for. So you just go down here and paste it. And now it says scope, propeller heads, the echo. Well, instead of propeller heads, this is now going to be you know, blank, whatever the company is, uh, the name that I told you about, um, based on what you see in this window and this category section, okay? So, once you've done that, uh, then you'll start going through all the, the, the knobs and listings of your device. Uh, you know, the Behringer has a bunch of uh, rotary dials, and so it's like push encoder, one, one, okay. And you see how all these, you know, things have different uh, functions for what they match on the unit itself. When you're looking at these devices, they're going to call them different for every unit. So you can't just say, oh, filter frequency. No, because the subtractor identifies the filter frequency as filter, R, uh, filter FREQ. You don't have to worry about the number. So when you look into the edit, you would, it would say filter REQ only. Interesting, uh, when you're on the Korg and you want to adjust the filter frequency, it's called, that's the MG frequency. Um, that's just because it's in that section. So you have to type it out, the word frequency versus FREQ. So all these devices, uh, even though they might have the same slider, attack, delay, it might be, it, this calls it filter envelope attack. Um, and if you go to attack on another one, it's going to be called 
The court calls it EG attack. You see what I mean? So anyway, they all have different names. You have to make sure that matches. One wrong letter, one wrong spacing, and you'll get an error message when you, when you test it out. How do you test it out? When you do all this and save it, um, reason, if it's open, it's not going to recognize your changes until you reinitialize your setup for what your controller is. So if you go to your control surfaces, right now I have the Akai controlling my keyboard. That's my main keyboard controlling it. And here's the Behringer that we were just looking at. If I made changes, I need to deselect that I use it with reason and then reselect it again. You don't have to go out of the software. Just reselect it. And now it's initializing uh, and connecting. If there was any problem that you had, like a, 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 an error or something it doesn't understand, this check mark will be an X. And, the, and you click on it, and it'll show you what the error was. It just didn't like something. And it'll, it'll tell you what it was. And then you just have to go back into it and you know keep just keep going through the process. Trust me, this may be a pain now. You knock this out, though. And every time you create another device, every time you put a Korg in here, all your controllers uh, will work. Every every time you use it, I mean that to me is so you know so so worth the the, uh, the headache. So if I go down here to my Korg, okay, and I want to adjust something, well, I, I don't have to use my mouse. I can use my controller every time. It's just a beautiful thing. So anyway, so that's basically uh, the mapping. I know it's a lot to be throwing out there. Uh, I'm kind of, kind of covering it quickly. But I kind of give you a brief overview to, just to let you know it is possible. Um, I really was, I mean, I was trying to get technical support from line six through reason, and they they didn't know how it worked out. And I tried calling, you know, Korg, and I tried, you know, Rob Papen actually provided files, which was nice. They gave me a file to use, um, and I downloaded it, and I was like, great. But when I put it in there, um, they, they told you to make your controller a generic other device. You know, and I opened it, and I and I just threw it in this folder, and it didn't work. I, I didn't know what was going on, but the the good side of that was I at least got the data that I needed for the device, so I knew what it was called, um, and you know this whole section that you would copy and paste. So, like I said, there's there's a lot of stuff you have to kind of uh, edit around, but it is possible now with rack extensions to control them with your control surfaces and have them remembered. So I hope this video was helpful. Please hit like if it was. And also, I find it so annoying when people do tutorials and they play their favorite music in the background really loud. It's like, you know, <laughs> uh, hit a like if you uh, enjoyed the fact that I did not choose to have any music in the background to subject you to. And uh, I, uh, you know, stay tuned. I'll be showing a video soon of my, uh, you know, my studio setup. Uh, thanks for watching this alternating bit. Later.